Everybody, this is Coach Coventry from Immaculata introducing another OHSF All Decade member, D Lineman. I'm going to let him do his own introduction. Take it away. All right, my name is uh, John Bewald. Uh, played Ottawa High School football at Ashbury College uh, from 2009 to 2012 um, as a line or as a DM. Sorry, a little bit of linebacker as well in there. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be nominated for this list and. Uh, it's, it's definitely humbling. Really no small feat at all. As you know, uh, we talked about the process before we uh, got into this interview and uh, yeah, definitely well-deserved. Uh, Coach Landon really spoke highly about you. And uh, before we get into all that high school stuff, I would like to know, of course, and get to know you uh, from the time that you started to play football. So can you speak to us about your journey, you know, growing up and how you got influenced by some coaches, clubs, or some names that really impacted you growing up? For, for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess my fir- first football memory, um, so both my dad and my grandpa were uh, football players um, at the university level. And uh, so I kind of grew up in, in a bit of a football family. And my first football memory was actually when I was, I think, five years old. Uh, my dad and my grandpa took me to uh, an Ottawa U versus McGill football game out uh, at Lansdowne there. And uh I guess they said when I came home after that, I was just tackling a cardboard box for a few weeks for a while. And uh, I guess my dad uh, the next year decided, well, we might as well just throw him in there. And so I started playing uh, for the Canterbury Mustangs when I was six years old. Uh, Never really looked back after that. So I played with them for a while up until grade eight. And then that's kind of when high school football took over. Perfect. Uh, any coaches or any kind of players you remember growing up that uh, have, uh, you know, kind of have been around or perhaps playing university football now or even coaches that have, you know, influenced you growing up in terms of that, not just your father? For sure. Yeah. Well, my dad uh, did end up coaching a little bit there. Yeah. So uh, he was uh, he was always around. Um, but yeah, I, when I was six years old, I remember I was playing with all the 10 year olds and uh, yes. there were some great players at that time. I remember uh, Greg Carter. Uh, who ended up being a good basketball player yep. out at St. Pat's. But uh, my dad always said that he was probably the best tight football player to ever play the game. So <laughs> what was, could have uh, been, eh, Greg Carter? You know, ended up it. in all these uh, – we're, we're talking basketball on a football Zoom here, but uh, yeah, right. you know, <laughs> ended up an all-defensive player in another, in another sport. But uh, that sounds amazing. I had no idea he even played football. So Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was pretty cool to, you know, grow up playing with uh, guys like that. That's cool. But uh, yeah, uh, were you always a D lineman growing up or did you kind of play all over the place? Did they have you kind of moving, moving uh, from position to position or every, every special team and never coming off the field type guy? Yeah. Honestly, I, I mostly played linebacker growing up. Um, so I was put there a lot, uh, a little bit of offense, but I mean, I was, I was always on the defensive side of the ball and uh, yeah, I was usually, you know, from the time I was six, I was always playing with the older guys. So, uh, you know, they were getting all that time on offense and everything. And they threw me in on defense. And uh, I just learned to love it and, you know, never looked back in that sense. That's awesome. You're creating, uh, creating a monster at that point, you know, just going to pack <laughs> all over the field. Now, uh, you, you mentioned, of course, your, your segue from grade eight, uh, moving away from club football and getting into the OHSF stream. Uh, let's talk about your time in high school football. You know, what were some of uh, the good memories and, uh, of course, the influences going on there, uh, speaking from your JV time all the way to grade 12? Right. Uh, yeah, so I think kind of when my, you know, the seriousness of my football career started to take off was when I got to Ashbury. Um, I joined the school in grade 7, and uh, our senior football coach at the time was Dwayne Smith, who really helped build that program for years before I got there. And uh, I guess he saw a little something in me where he would take me um, when I was in grade eight, he'd let me come to the senior practices in the, uh, in the gym during the winter. Mm-hmm. And so I got a little bit of training in there and uh, started prepping for high school. Um, and then when I got into grade nine, John Landon uh, was the junior coach there. So uh, played with him for one year and uh, that was a great time. But then 
grade 10, I moved up to the varsity football team. So I played grade 10, 11, 12 there with uh, coach Dwayne Smith. And he had a lot of other great coaches um, around at that time as well. So uh, those guys uh, definitely really helped build that uh, program at Ashbury. And it was a lot of fun playing there. Yeah. Can you get take us through some of those years? You know, there was some success and, you know, maybe some some constructive things that you had to work on, but uh, culminating in, you know, a couple AIA All-Star games and probably some individual accolades and some people that you played with as well. Right. Yeah. So I was in grade nine. Um, I was a little bit of a smaller guy, you know, I hadn't quite hit my growth spurt yet. So I was uh, I was still able to uh, start at linebacker there and um, play that whole season. But, uh, you know, wasn't the guy that was winning any awards at the end of the season or anything like that, but uh, just starting off and, and started, uh, you know, really enjoying my time playing football there and all the guys that were on the team, um, all the camaraderie and everything. That was, that was a great time there. Um, but then, you know, I, I kind of had a little bit of a growth spurt, started understanding the game a little bit more. And uh, by the time I got into grade 10, um, I was, you know, flying around and making some plays and ended up winning uh, the defensive MVP for the team that year. Um, and I believe, I believe I went to the all-star game uh, that year, grade 11 and 12 as well. Um, so that was, that was a lot of fun um, playing in those games. Uh, lots of great coaches there from all around uh, coming to help out and with the Ottawa U guys as well. Um, so yeah, that was awesome. You learn a lot from those, uh, getting those guys together in that, that short two weeks, you know, you're practicing. Exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's really best on best. We're, uh, we're here in Ottawa, we're trying to, we've kind of gone away from the AIA, but we're trying to bring it back as a, a game called, uh, you know, uh, it's the side of the city, basically. So Ottawa U versus Carlton, and we're, we're working on bringing that back as, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you, you get to wear, basically, uh, their, their colors and get to play on the All-Star game that way. Right so on, that's be, awesome. Something fun to do for them, but uh, mm. amazing memories for the, that AIA game, and uh, as well as, you know, you as a ending up as a defensive MVP that's uh, that's big as especially as an underclassman it showed that you know you could kind of lead the team uh, no matter what uh, what grade you were in and showing younger guys that it's possible to be a leader at a younger right. age right right yeah so from then on uh, of course you know uh, grade 12 hits and you guys kind of uh, moved into another conference and uh, got some games in there and uh, as of course uh, it, it, you ended up playing teams like St. Andrews College and you know St. Mike's and other things like that uh, but, uh, you know, still leading, uh, leading categories in Ottawa and, uh, and being able to get recruited, uh, of course. And, uh, I'd love for you to speak about, you know, your, that grade 12 year and your, your opportunities to get recruited and what, what your decision was at the end of the day to kind of head in the direction that you went and, uh, perhaps give some advice to student athletes who are in grade 12 that want to move on. To the for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, I mean, um, starting in that uh, grade 12 year we were in that C CESA league so um, we we're playing out in Toronto a lot against those teams um, and the, the surrounding area so uh, there were there were a lot of good teams out there and a lot of big uh, strong players that ended up you know I ended up playing with some of them um, from St. Andrews especially um, they were big uh, western <laughs> recruited a lot from there mm -hmm. so we we had a lot of great players from there but um, yeah that uh, that was an interesting year. I started getting a little bit of interest in my grade 11 year um, from some schools. Uh, you know, Ottawa U being around here a lot. Um, a little bit from Queens as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I had a solid year playing there. I think it was probably um, sort of my breakout year in terms of high school for sure. Um, just kind of playing up to that competition that we had and, and really... Uh, giving it everything I had. And uh, I think that helped with uh, some of the exposure. Um, for me, uh, I know the teams out East were recruiting me a lot, um, but I always, I always wanted to go to Western. Um, and for me, it was between Western and Queens actually. Uh, and, you know, a lot of my friends uh, from school ended up going to Queens and uh, you know, I did visits to both of those schools and um, you know, Queens was, was, honestly recruited me a little bit harder as well. Western, uh, you know, they had a great, um, a lot of great players in the London surrounding area. So uh, at that time they weren't really recruiting further out 
Um, they still that recruit time. very much locally. It's uh, th- that yeah. London talent pool is no joke. I mean, neither no, are we here in good. Ottawa, but uh, you know, it's yeah. uh, it's they they recruit the backyard quite well. So it's tough to exactly. tough to crack it over there. Absolutely. And and yeah, and just that Toronto uh, surrounding area as well. You know, they have so much talent to choose from. Um, and so for me, I mean, I saw Western at the time. You know, I saw the the Tyler Varga year there, where you know they were just absolutely killing it and. For me, I just wanted to go on a team where, you know, I really thought they had a great shot at a championship and everything like that. And I knew it wasn't going to be very easy to crack, you know, the roster in the first year. I knew, you know, there were some great guys. I might have to do a little bit of waiting, you know. Um, but for me, I just, I, I wanted to be, you know, a player that was on a good team and, you know, one that I saw um, as one of, you know, more, I can say, um, you know, they had some of the best coaches and, and everything like that. Um, and I just, I thought, you know, my opportunity to probably play at the next level was uh, great going there. So, yeah, I, uh, I I didn't get a whole lot of interest from them, honestly, um, in terms of recruiting. But uh, John Landon knew I wanted to go there and, and same with my other coaches. So we kind of recruited myself out there um, by, you know, sending them video and saying, hey, you know, this kid has some interest in going there. What do you think? And they ended up seeing my highlights and offering me a scholarship there. Um, and so, you know, pretty much when that came in, I, I took it. And uh, I think that was probably one of the best decisions I ever made personally. But, yeah. It just goes to show you that, you know, you, even as a young student athlete, uh, as a recruit, you know, you, you have to go and knock on some doors if you really want those opportunities, right? They're not just going to be handed sure. to you. Uh, exactly. Especially in today's day, day and age with social media, with Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter and uh, and even using Facebook, most coaches, uh, I don't know if they're on Instagram all, all the way yet, but uh, they're definitely mm-hmm. on Twitter and Facebook, just just dropping them a, a DM and, and, you know, sending some tape and, or even an email. Mm-hmm. As long That's as, you it. know, you're, you're formatting it in a polite format, you know, they'll, they'll reach out to you and uh, if, they, if sure. they're interested and that's clearly know. What, yeah, what you did. And um, that's amazing. It culminated in something pretty special at Western and, I'd love for you to share your time at uh, Western and talk to us about, you know, uh, the coaches, the coaches over there that prepared you to, to head to the next level. For sure. For sure. Uh, man, Western, Western was a time for sure. So, I mean, I got there, you know, pretty undersized. Um, I wasn't, you know, huge, you know, really filled out yet coming out of high school. So I was still a little bit undersized and I, I came in as a linebacker there and, uh, yeah, I, I remember coming in and, you know, feeling, you know, these guys are real good. They're real fast, real strong, real powerful. Like, who knows who knows what's going to happen here? So, Were you still playing at the time during the age cap or was it the unlimited age cap at the time? When I started, it was the unlimited age cap. Yeah. So we had uh, a couple 20-something-year-olds, you know, <laughs> playing at the time. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that was interesting. So there was some some bigger older boys there and I came in I was you know a a true freshman uh, 17 years old Um, so I was young and a little bit raw but uh, I came in there and and one of the things that helped me um, play that first year uh, was long snapping so I learned how to long snap in in high school and you know I ended up being fairly good at it and um, our long snapper at Western got hurt during that uh, that first year I was playing. So that was kind of my opportunity to get in there on special teams. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so I had, you know, a few good games, long snapping and, and playing special teams. And um, moving into the next year, it was kind of the same thing that happened. Uh, got some time just on specials and didn't, you know, I didn't get any time playing uh, any linebacker, um, but just kind of grinded away on specials and, knew that my turn would eventually come if I just kept working hard. And um, I was in my third year in training camp. Uh, our coach said during, uh, Paul Gleason said during um, uh, a defensive meeting there that, uh, you know, we're going to have some guys move positions and this, you know, it, it doesn't mean anything bad. It just, we, we see you, you know, playing in a different position. And right then I knew that I was going to be moving to DN uh, I just kind of heard it my whole life growing up. They said, you know, you have the frame. John Landon was one of the first guys that told me that as well. He said, uh, you know, you got that 
that DN frame, once you put some weight on, you're, you're going to move to DN for sure. And so, <laughs> you know, I, I was, I was pumped about that because I knew, you know, I might, I might have a better chance of playing and, and getting time in. Um, so yeah, moving in that third year, I was playing D end and they started just putting me in, uh, for passing downs. So we had another guy who would play mostly the rundowns. I'd come in and pass rush. That was kind of mm -hmm. my specialty at the time. So I wasn't starting and I wasn't getting, uh, you know, as many reps as I wanted to, but I was finally cracking the game, uh, on defense. Right. So I was, I was getting plays and, um, that, that was, you know, started moving up, just slowly grinding away and, and moving towards that starter position. And uh, I kind of started having some great games towards the end of the season and my playing time went up. And by the end of it, I was playing most of the game um, in the last few games. Uh, I know we played in the playoffs against Guelph and I pretty much played the whole game there. So that was, uh, that was good. And then I knew I had to have a great, uh, great off season after that coming in and, and really have that breakout year. Uh, it was my draft year and all that. So I, I, I was working since grade 12 at uh, Elite Performance Academy here um, in Ottawa, out in Canada there. And Shameless plug, Pat Woodcock's the man. So yeah, absolutely. that's it. Yeah. Pat Woodcock and we had Donnie Ruse there too. And we really, they created this football environment where uh, we just had a, a bunch of guys who were playing CIS ball and a couple pro guys and just grinded away all summer and uh, you know got a little bigger put some weight on and some size and yeah that fourth year it was uh, one of my best years for sure just was able to start every game and was pretty much playing on every special team as well so it was uh, it was a lot but uh, I mean I, I wouldn't take it back for sure and then pretty much the same thing in my fifth year so it was great. Clearly a dominant player if you can stay on basically the entire game except offense, uh, you know, <laughs> in, a, in a U sports football game, that's, that's no joke. I mean, as we yes. know with the 20 second play clock and, and the three downs, like we, you and I have both been through it. It moves quickly. It moves oh, yeah. very quickly. So, you know, Definitely. it just goes to show you that, that conditioning and, and getting yourself physically prepared to, mm -hmm. to go through that grind is super important, whether in high school Definitely. or in university. So, Definitely. uh, Definitely something you can pass on to those to those student athletes. And uh, as you said, you know your your draft year came up, and uh, you, you had the opportunity to you know uh, get signed and uh, and and live out that pro career. Uh, mm -hmm. For the, for those student athletes uh, in Ottawa and and beyond, looking you know to to actually take that next step to, and and have those ambitions to be a pro. Uh, speak speak about your time in the pros uh, briefly, and you know what what the mentality has to be going through from high school all the way to to the pros to prepare yourself. For that right yeah so um i was you know i always knew i wanted to play pro um uh there were times where i you know kind of questioned myself whether it could happen or whether it not wouldn't but uh you know i knew that there was no point in not trying so i always just put in that effort trying to find uh you know the best coaches and and um uh strength coach and everything just to help me through um on that journey so i definitely you know, going and playing in university and not starting till your fourth year, which it was my draft year, you know, was, was tough. Um, just getting that exposure to the scouts and everything like that. Um, but, you know, I, I thought I had a good enough year to get drafted and I was getting calls from teams. I went to the combine. Uh, I actually only got invited to the regional combine um, at first. And then a few guys, I, I, I don't know, I think it was like five guys or something made it to, uh, the national combine from those regional combines. And I was lucky enough to put on uh, a good enough performance to, to take me to that national combine. And um, yeah, from there, met with a few coaches. Uh, I think I only met with three teams. Um, and so, you know, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder from all that, uh, you know, not getting an invite to the national combine and not meeting with every coach. So um, yeah, I think that really kind of, um, that little chip on my shoulder helped me, you know, keep moving forward. Uh, and then it was um, on draft day. Sorry. Uh, I was getting calls from coaches before that. And, you know, I thought there was a pretty good chance of getting drafted. Um, and, you know, I remember just sitting there with my family, watching the draft, watching guys go by and, 
you know, not hearing my name and it came to the last pick and didn't end up hearing my name. Um, and, you know, that was tough. That was tough. But I just kind of fueled the fire for me. I uh, just kept working that summer, um, grinding real hard. And I think it was two days before the last preseason game uh, for the CFL in that summer that I got a call uh, from the Red Blacks who uh, invited me out to training camp. And so I had, I think, a practice and a half, no equipment uh, to get ready for that game. So I uh, just ended up playing mostly specials. Uh, well, all specials, but um, yeah, got in that game against Hamilton and got that C that taste of the CFL life. And uh, yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, they ended up offering me a practice roster spot um, there, and I kind of had some unfinished business at Western, so I told them, you know, I'll be back, but I want to go finish up and graduate, and you know, play that last year with uh, my mm. team at Western because. I mean, we had such a good culture there with, you know, Greg Marshall and yeah. Paul Gleason, all, all the coaches we had there um, were just tremendous. And we had such a great team environment. And so I had to go back there and, and finish that year. Um, but then they signed me after that season and uh, came back into training camp and probably had the best training camp I've, I've ever had uh, in my life. So that was, uh, that was good. Um, and, you know, I was really feeling good about things, was thinking, you know, could even be getting time as a defensive end uh, come the start of the season. Um, and then uh, that second preseason game, uh, running down on a punt cover and yeah. just stepped the wrong way and blew the knee out, tore the ACL. And that was it for that year. Um, you know, they they weren't going to keep a rookie on uh, on the roster and, especially one that just blew his knee. So unfortunately got cut from the team. They're real good about it though. Helped me with all the physio and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I was grateful for that. And I was hoping to come back that next year. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people were uh, asking me, all right, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? And I was like, you know, it kind of fueled the fire as well because I was like, well, I got to play football again, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I spent a long, you know, hard year rehabbing that knee and, and trying to get it right for the season. And, you know, I was thinking Ottawa was going to call me and uh, bring me back on the team. And I don't know if, uh, you know, I, I think they, they were thinking about it, but Toronto called first and I took the first opportunity I had and ended up going playing a few years there. Um, the knee wasn't quite right. You know, I, I lost a step for sure. I wasn't as fast or explosive as I was. But you start uh, to doubt yourself a little bit. It's uh, it's and it's not even a, a skill thing. It's it's the the knee might be good, but you you it's in your head. It's a mental game. I I completely can can relate to that for one sure. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, I just I I didn't really feel like I I had it all under me again. But mm -hmm. I was I was uh, able to make the team. Um, you know I. <laughs> I didn't have a great training camp that first year in Toronto. Um, you know, I just slow coming off the ball and it, it just wasn't quite the same. Um, and I think they, so <laughs> the, the GM actually at the time after the season told me, you know, there was that week before the preseason game where we were talking about cutting you. And, uh, and then, you know, they, they ended up waiting until that first preseason game, but it just kind of all came back to me. Uh, when I was playing and, you know, made a couple of tackles on specials and, you know, made some plays at the end in there. And from there, they kept me on the team. And it, it was enough, those two preseason pre -season games to kind of save my spot on the team. And I was able to uh, play with uh, under Mark Tressman there for the year um, mm. and then come back and play again that, that second year. And then, unfortunately, I had a concussion in my second year, uh, which was last year that was – um, you know, bad enough that uh, I decided to hang up the cleats. Um, I had also uh, been working on my master's at the time. Um, so I had uh, I had something else to do and I wasn't going to play pro for too long anyways. Um, but, you know, the body had been through enough at that point and mm -hmm. decided to hang them up. 
And that's no small feat, absolutely. You know, it sounds like uh, that pro career was was less than what you desired, and it never ends the way we want, as we know. But right. uh, uh, and it's it's the fact that you even got there is you know it's, it's a it's a credit to your journey, and you know taking yourself to that point. Uh, is really what matters at the end of the day. You know, you could say you've been there, done that. And, uh, you know, from your time from Ottawa to Western all the way to the pros, you know, you put that time in and that's that's what's to be respected in the end. And uh, that's awesome. Before we uh, finish, wrap this up, can you uh, give some advice to any student athletes, you know, that are thinking of, of doing this journey that, that you went through uh, uh, from high school all the way to, to the pros, what, what could you leave to them about, you know, work ethic or just, you know, getting the grades together or whatever you feel like is a very important thing for that process? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, pretty much every coach I've ever had um, has always, and, and every coach harps on this, but student athlete, right. You gotta, you gotta have those grades. Cause I mean, if you don't have the grades, you're not going to play. You're, you're not going to be in school and, you know, if you're, you're, especially in university, um, if you can't make those classes, you can't make those credits and then, then you're not going to be on the team. Um, so that's, I'd say the most important thing, um, in terms of that, the work ethic has to be on the field and off the field. Uh, so you have to be able to do both. Um, and, and not to mention, you know, this, this game only lasts for so long. It's, uh, it's a great game, but it's not something you can, you know, pick up and play in the park, you know, tackle football, uh, all the time. So it's, it's, it's a special game um, and it's, it's a great game, but if you want to go all the way through, then you have to have uh, everything, right? You can't just rely on your football talent. Um, and then, you know, you have to realize that at some point the game does end and you're going to have to do something else, right? So uh, just work as hard as you can, but let that work ethic translate to both sides. Yeah. It's the good old adage of, uh, you know, use football, don't let football use you. And uh, I think right. I think you did a great job uh, explaining that because, uh, as we all know, you know, as you stated, you you have that master's now and, you know, you, you've worked hard towards that. And uh, you've you've got the education because of football and you're able to kind For of sure. uh, uh, now that football has ended, take that transition seamlessly. And that's something big that, uh, you know, sometimes we don't talk about as, as student athletes when football ends, it's the whole what's next, right? You know, for a lot of people, sure. they don't know. And that's, uh, that's a big sure. deal to know. Yeah. And honestly, I think we both probably have stories where we've, you know, seen a lot of great football talent wasted from, uh, you know, not being able to hold it together outside Absolutely. of the field. So I, I know guys that were twice the ice athlete that I was, but just couldn't keep for it sure. in the classroom. And it's hundred percent. We've, we've all seen those kids, so it's super important to remind those student-athletes growing up to, to take care of that school portion. And uh, sure. speak, speaking of school, John, uh, thank you for uh, doing this interview for uh, about uh, your time at Ashbury College and, uh, and, uh, and beyond, and we really appreciate that. And uh, we want, just want to congratulate you again uh, for making this list because it was no small feat. You know, it took, took a while to thank you. It and uh, welcome to the, to the OHSF All-Decade team from all the coaching staffs in Ottawa. Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. No worries. Thank you again for the interview and uh, have a good night. This is Coach Coventry signing off and we've just added another OHSF All-Decade Team defensive end to the list. All the best. Thank you.